Hello Polygoners! Welcome to our most recent daily cast. I know it's been a little while since we've actually done them daily, but renovations on the studio coming along very nicely and we're going to be getting back into the groove of things very shortly. Stay tuned for more updates on Hope Team League. Looks like we're going to be getting that started somewhere in the middle of September and ending it up around uh, the third week of October, but uh, stay tuned for more details on that. We are going to be getting right on into uh, this game. I know I've just been kind of idling here on a random spot, but uh, this is going to be on Catalina, actually one of my uh, least favorite maps. I hate random number generation. I hate like three spawn maps this is actually the second three spawn map after merry-go-round and thank god it was retired like a year and a half ago september 2015 i think but anyways let's introduce these players we'll get back into talking about the map and the players and how all this stuff ends up working out but here on the top right hand side of catalina it's juggernaut jason and the blue terran trunks and here on the bottom left hand side going for a fast expansion it's going to be game time. He plays Red Zerg for Sloth Gaming. Now, this map has a lot of airspace like this. And on this particular spawning positions, because it's rotationally symmetric, this is a good way to drop. Because you can come here and come right along in here. Um, whereas it's a little harder to you know come in here. But you do have access straight to the main. So there's a little bit of drop shenanigans going on, but basically airplay is super popular here. Reaper harassment here by Juggernaut Jason. He's always been good at that stuff. Mostly there for scouting, though, is this Reaper. <clears throat> what he wants to see more important than anything is uh, whether these guys stay on gas. And right now we see that game time is continuing to get gas. This is not his typical Sauron style that he typically employs. Rather, it's going to be a tech-based strategy. We'll see if he goes for mutas. But with this particular map and all this wide open space, I would see no reason not to. And notice that uh, there's a little less space here than there is over here. It's just little details on the map like that that matter. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with this map, it is named after a Korean pop song. And uh, what does like the word Catalina itself mean? Um, it, it took Orange Caramel, the K-pop group who released it, to explain it. But basically, it's like a nickname or a classification for a female um, that's really gifted and sometimes a little bit full of herself. Basically, it's a name that says this is an awesome map, and uh, it knows it. It's also, um, like I said, a uh, the like song from this band. Ooh, good pickup on that Reaper. But an octopus is actually featured in the music video as well as each tentacle representing one of the major K-pop groups. More information on that uh, can be found on Google. But anyways, we see the Spire is underway and this is very unusual for game time. So we'll look at what he does right. We'll look at some of the things he does wrong. But this is definitely going to be something Juggernaut Jason is not expecting because like every time I ever see game time play, it's Sauron Zerg. It's always, always, always Sauron Zerg. But these guys have been playing a lot. Maybe he's trying to mix it up. Maybe he's just trying to practice something new. We'll see exactly what's going on there. But what I do want you to notice, it's about four and a half minutes. Stimpak running a little late. He's gone a little more economic on this. It's not like a bad late. It's just a, he chose to get a little more economy before doing the 2 on one But this is indeed Juggernaut Jason's typical 2 on one play. And that means this is going to be arriving between five to five minutes. This is about 30 seconds uh, late just because of... Um, Again, the economic decisions, there's been a little bit of poking here at the ramp, no biggie. Engineering Bay going to block that off with a full wall off, but of course game time can see, um, you know, this this side of the ramp poking up here reveals like a second Engineering Bay or any kind of tech that would be in this area. Good choice, sacrifice a couple of those, but as long as the, the, the Marines are here, that's what he wanted to know. Did the Marines leave and now he knows to just flood out production but he's already got the mutalisks underway mutalisks are great at shutting down drop ships the medevac in this situation is mostly to lift up in the current meta zerg is always doing like a fast three base which means he has to say low tier tech which means a low anti-air in the early portions of the game so the medevacs just allow the marines to get away do some poking two on one's really supposed to be an economic style play so we've got the upgrades coming way early for Jason, and that's good because that's the weakness to what game time is doing. 
His upgrades are going to be later because he needs the gas for the mutas. His third base is going to be later, but the mutas let him keep it, and it, he keeps it really well. It's very safe. The drops are not that potent against a mutalis king player. In that situation, you may be better off just going for some hellions and you know roasting some lings or something like that, or just trying to shut down the creep while taking a third base and just going for a longer macro game. This is the safest thing game um, can do, but it also means his upgrades are delayed, so you don't try to win it early. And that's uh, a big thing here for Jason. So Jason making the right call, dropping here on the creep, scans that, kills that off, smart going for these tumors, and here's a little bit of an issue. This widow mine is a great intercept spot this overseer all it's got to do is get like right in here and it's gonna reveal this location and that's fine but where's the widow mine that's supposed to protect this widow mine if you're gonna do a drop with widow mines you need a second one now not every player does this but it's a vulnerability in almost every person's play that I've studied and I want I want you to see why if there was a widow mine guarding this widow mine, this would play out way different. So the initial ling right here, trying to come in here. There's not enough marines here to like leave a few here to intercept. So the other widow mine would be able to do that. These marines coming through, but that means they're being pulled off away from this. This widow mine gets picked up, and now game time can attack. With another widow mine, like right in here, gives him somewhere to retreat to. Boom, game time has to call off the pursuit. Watch what happens with game time having caught Jason off guard with this. Immediately the widow mine dies. And that's the only thing that keeps the Marines alive. That kind of area of effect is the only thing that can shut down a dedicated Ling Muta player. And that's exactly what game time's doing. Now, this is a good moment, a good technique here by Jason. It's one of the tactics you actually see a lot of Terran use. Pick up with the medevac, despite the fact that there's mutalisks. Maybe you'll take some damage, but with some good afterburners and just a short distance, you can drop off. The moment you start dropping marines, especially with this low muta count, only five here, the muta player has to respond to this. But there, he's still like, with the medevac there, no, 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 no. This is not a good engagement for the mutas. He's got to wait for the links. And that's exactly what we're seeing. Boom, just buying some time. And the Lings try to get there, but the second um, medevac has started dropping. So at this point, Jason has won the engagement. He killed some creep, and he's looking pretty dominant in this position. But he's continuing to drop, and this is getting scary. Lings and Mutalisks are still continuing to produce. Game time has defender's advantage, and game time is a Zerg player with explosive production if he chooses not to make workers. Good stem, but there's a scan into an area where he can't actually get to to kill the tumor. Up here, he could have killed that tumor. So now he is targeting units. He's trying to get a little bit too greedy rather than winning. A positional victory by eliminating creep and you know taking it into the long game he's trying to get these early game kills and the Ling's getting a good surround there and can't really pick up the medevac some um, because yeah it's just a bad engagement at this moment game time has doubled the supply now this is again where you see a variation between Sauron style Zergs and a tech based Zerg because in this particular version game time is now able to go offensive he's just now secured a third base so he's going to continue making units if he can get one more shutdown like this he can start really being offensive but he is getting a little sloppy Loses a few mutalisks there. This overlord, of course, is going to have to go. And now we're more on Jason's side of the map. But what does Jason have here to defend? Well, in addition to the marines, he's got one widow mine. 
We've already seen the problem with just one widow mine. And the overseer's already there. Boom. Now it's dead. Now, Jason, who has not actually built a command center, even if he wanted to take a third base and have the command center, he doesn't have the army to be able to do so. He would need to be able to defend this, and honestly, there's not enough AOE or positional units, what we call pivot units, in order to do that. And all this time, we're just seeing more units flooded out by game time. He does have the plus one flyer attack, so he wants to end this in a mid game. If he wanted to take this late game, he would need two evolution chambers and start working 1-1 one -one upgrades within the next minute or two. The fact that we're not going to see that says that he wants to kill his opponent and he wants to do it immediately. There's an armory underway, so Jason again playing a little bit more for the long game and he's trying to stay active on the map, but again, doesn't have the pivot unit to retreat to. There are no tanks, there are no widow mines. Some good zoning here on these two turrets, but it leaves these add-ons very vulnerable. This is something you see a lot of players making, even at the higher levels, but that's something you can do in your own uh, games, is keep an eye on these add-ons. Meanwhile, there's a little bit of a push over here, but... He's wedged himself in between two areas of creep, but he has to retreat here onto the creep. Now, the Lings are getting a great surround. Mutalists are here to shut down the uh, medevacs there. One medevac already getting killed off. Another one dangerously low. Bounce of the glaive killing that one. And this one's starting to unload because he knows the Mutalists are ultimately going to kill it. Snipes that medevac, and Ling's going to be coming in here. Only a few Mutalists have actually died. Ten Mutas, that's a thousand gas. It's really a lot more than you would want. But this is why he cannot commit to upgrades. This is a very mid-game, all-in-ish type build, which is why we're not seeing a fourth base. Jason playing this game offensive on his opponent's side of the map actually got him killed. He didn't read his opponent correctly. He didn't say, aha, you're getting um, no upgrades, no fourth base, and... You've got a lot of mutilists which have a plus one upgrade. This is a kill block. And instead accepting his role as a defensive player. No, Jason is a very stylistic player. He likes to be offensive. He's got great multitasking. And unfortunately, that bit him in the ass this game. Great player. Love him. Love watching these guys. Just thought it's something we could all learn a lesson or two from. Thanks for joining me, guys. I am Shaft with Polygon Gaming. If you like this content, make sure you punch that subscribe button right in the face. The like button, too. It is your friend, so beat it up all you want. If you uh, really like this content and want to support us on Patreon, please visit the link in the description. Even just $1 will begin earning you rewards on Patreon. Thank you so much, guys. See you next time. Chatelet, my dudes. If you want to be notified when we release videos like this, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you don't know where that is, I'm not going to teach you how to use the internet. There's probably no hope for you.